For at TV, the world is thinking. And let me start with some research about cheating. So you remember Enron? Uh, Enron happened a few years ago. And uh, when it happened, I started wondering <coughs> about, about the particular individual in that, in that company. And there were two things that interest me. One was that the three architects of Enron uh, also seemed to have been good citizens in the community. They gave money to charity. They seemed to be you know, in all kinds of organization. It didn't really fit with the vision of a, of a nasty crook. The second thing I wondered is how could it be that there were you know, 10,000 bad people at Enron? Right? What were the HR practices that uh, attracted all these, all these people together? Could it be that there was something in the structure of Enron that actually allowed relatively normal people to behave in this, in this way? And uh, like we usually do things, I tried to create a very simple experiment to look at that, and I'll describe those. So we took a sheet of paper and created a set of 20 simple math problems that everybody could, could solve given enough time. And we passed those out to a group of students. But we gave them only five minutes. When the five minutes were over, people handed us back the sheets of paper. They solved four problems, and we paid them $4 for their performance. Okay? That was the control condition. We just learned how much people can solve in five minutes. Then in another group, we did the same thing. But when they finished, instead of giving us the sheet and saying, here's what I solved, they tore the sheet up. They shredded it. There was no evidence left. And then they were asked to tell us how many they solved correctly. And they solved seven. Now, <coughs> were you in the experiments? Did you ever? <laughs> um, so, so these guys did not become smarter all of a sudden. Uh, they just cheated. Now, interestingly enough, almost nobody ever claimed to have solved 20. In fact, we had very few people that you would call bad apples. M most of the cheating was done by generally good people who cheated just a little bit. Okay? And now the question is, why, why just a little bit? So we said the two economic incentives to cheat is either the probability of being caught or the amount of reward. Let's vary those. So sometimes we vary the amount of reward. We got people to... Uh, work for 10 cents, 25 cents, 50 cents, a dollar per problem, two dollars per problem, five dollars per problem, didn't make a big difference. Okay? It's not the case that we're more money on the line, people were cheating a lot, people still cheated just by a little bit. Then we said, what about the probability of being caught? Let's change that. So we got some people to shred the whole sheet, some people to shred half of it, some people got to get out of the room and pay themselves from a jar of money that had over a hundred dollars in it. No chance of catching them. People still cheated by the same little amount. Okay? Nothing changed. <clears throat> so then the question was, why, what is stopping people? Why, why do we cheat just a little bit and then stop? <clears throat> and the thought we had was that maybe we value the ability to look at ourselves in the mirror and feel good about it. Right? We all want to think of ourselves as good people. And maybe there's a fudge factor. There's a level by which we can cheat and still feel good about ourselves. So how, how do you test something like this? To test it, you want to make something that would get people to be less comfortable with cheating, and therefore they will cheat less. And you want to create something that would get people to be more comfortable in cheating and see that they cheat more. So first of all, let me tell you about the cheating less. So we got people to a set of studies, and we said, today we have two experiments for you. The first one will be a memory experiment, and the next one will be this math experiment. And in the memory experiment, half the people were asked to recall 10 books they read in high school, and the other half were asked to recall the Ten Commandments. Now, anybody here thinks they remember the Ten Commandments? I'm willing to bet against most of you. Uh, it's very, very hard, and very few people remember it. Now, <clears throat> the question we asked was, what happened after people contemplated the Ten Commandments? What would happen when they next come to the experiment and have a chance to cheat? Two things happened. The first thing is that people who thought about the Ten Commandments did not get any better in math. And the second was that they stopped cheating. Nobody cheated after recalling Ten Commandments, and it didn't matter how many commandments they remembered. It wasn't, it wasn't as if the more religious people cheated less and the less religious people cheated more. It was enough to contemplate morality that eliminated cheating. Then we tried it in another way. Uh, we got people to sign the honor code. So the student who came to the experiment signed, I understand that this study falls under the MIT honor code. They finished filling out the survey. They shredded it. 
and they came and told us how many they solved, no cheating whatsoever. Interestingly enough, MIT doesn't have an honor code. <laughs> so <coughs> so it's, not, it's not about the honor code itself. Um, by the way, another interesting thing, anybody here went to Princeton? Okay. okay. So Princeton has a very strong honor code. In fact, they take the undergrads and they spend a week pushing the honor code into them. And uh, now, we ran these experiments also at Princeton. When you take the average Princeton student and the average MIT student, these guys have had a week training about morality and these guys didn't. Do you think there's any difference between them? No difference whatsoever. Now, it's possible that these Princeton students start at the worst position. But, <laughs> but if we assume that they start in the same way, the, the week-long exercise at Princeton had no bear, bo, bore no fruit, right? It didn't work out. At the same time, reminding people just before they attempted to cheat about honor code, whether you have an honor code or not, completely eliminated cheating.